What is up, ladies and gentle nerds? It's your boy Graham, also known as Hamhawks42 on the internet, and today we are looking at another random magic card. So we are on gatherer.wizards.com, the official magic card database, and uh, yeah, so I had just clicked the random card button. Let's take a look. Today we are looking at Herald of the Pantheon, which is a centaur shaman. It is a 2-2 two, two for one generic and a green. So we're looking at a bear, except it's not a bear. It's a centaur. And uh, it, it has the abilities that enchantment spells you cast cost one generic less to cast. Cool. And then whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life. So this is a very interesting... Um, I don't know, this is interesting, especially when you comp compare it to the other enchantresses that we've looked at in the past, where when you cast an enchantment spell, you draw a card. Because in the end of the day, I much rather would... I would much rather be drawing cards than gaining life, but this does make my enchantment spells cheaper. So as a result, this here is not by itself a particularly strong like value engine that you can really build around. However, if you have a deck that is already leaning into enchantment synergies, all of a sudden you have an opportunity to reduce a whole heck of a lot of mana on a bear, effectively. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. And the other part about that that's really slick is if you're running this in a full-on Enchantress-style deck where you have a number of Enchantresses who are actually going to be drawing you cards when those enchantments come into play, then all of a sudden, this not only does it allow you to cast more enchantments in any given turn, especially when you're casting stuff like Omen of the Sea or um, Treacherous Blessing, where you cast the enchantment, it comes into play, and then you draw a bunch of cards, and then you draw the cards from the Enchantress. So Herald of the Pantheon is a target that your opponent seriously needs to consider when they're determining what to spend their removal on. And if I have an Argothian Enchantress down and a Herald of the Pantheon down, I would much rather my opponent spend resources trying to break the Herald of Pantheon rather than my Enchantress. Um, that's just me, but yeah, I would much rather be drawing cards and gaining life. But the fact that this ramps you effectively, because that's the other thing. When when I say ramp, what I'm referring to is that that's a colloquialism that we use sometimes in Magic, which is anything that will allow you to have access to more mana than you would otherwise have. Like the classic examples of this, actually the classic example where the expression came from is a card called Rampant Growth. It is a sorcery for one green and one generic. Search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped. So you what you do is you can cast that on turn two. You fix your mana because you can go grab any basic land. So if you, you know, are in three, four, five colors, you all of a sudden are able to grab something that's not the color you already have, which at least green is something in there. But on top of that, it also puts another land onto the battlefield. So because you get an additional land drop on turn two, all of a sudden now when you untap on turn three, if you have a land in hand and you play it, you now have access to four mana on turn three. Now, you had to effectively skip your turn two in order to get that, but depending on the value that you're able to set up, or depending on what cards are in your deck and what what they cost, that could be really cool, and that could help you out a lot. So, when, I'm, when I say that Herald of the Pantheon ramps you, it doesn't do it in the traditional sense. It doesn't put additional lands onto the battlefield, and it doesn't generate mana. Those are the two ways that things generally ramp. You know, when you think of ramp, you think of Birds of Paradise, you think of Llanowar Elves, um, you think of Sakura Tribe Builder, you think of Rampant Growth, blah, 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 blah. But what Herald of the Pantheon does for you is if you have a significant number of enchantments, so if you drop this on turn two, all of a sudden you could have an enchantment in your hand that costs four, that all of a sudden now only costs three, three so you can cast four mana worth of a spell on your turn three so in a way herald of the pantheon does ramp you if you are in an enchantment heavy deck and that's something to keep in mind especially when you're building decks like your commander decks where ramp is a very important feature um cost reduction is ramp it is and i know you might think well somebody could just shock this I'm like, well yeah they can they could also shock your birds of paradise or they could also shock your land war elves are you going to prevent are, are you going to refuse to put those in your decks too? I mean, it is it is what it is. It is a tool. Um, and that's pretty cool. And to be completely honest, like I was saying, in an Enchantress deck, of all the things that my opponent could be hitting, this one is, I, I'm okay with them targeting this one, honestly. So the other thing that I find really interesting about this card, when I first looked at it, um, I immediately thought Theros, like immediately, because we have, the, in the artwork, it's showing a centaur with what appears to be a large, like, battle standard, except in 
where, where you would expect the cloth to be billowing behind it, you actually see the starry, like, Nyx uh, landscape. And so, okay, we clearly have, like, night, nighttime lit-up constellation stuff. So we clearly have Nyx, which is a feature of Theros. And we have, a, we have a centaur shaman. We have a reference to the pantheon in the name. Like, it just screams, well, it screams Greek mythology, therefore Theros. And it's, yeah, it's freaking centaur. So I just assumed at first glance, oh, this must be from Theros. But it's not. This this card was originally printed in Magic Origins, which, if I'm remembering correctly, so that was actually, that came out in my blind spot, so I'm not as familiar with it. But from what I understand, the whole theme of Magic Origins was the, like, coming-of-age story, like the hero origin story of the Gatewatch and all the various planeswalkers. So I find it interesting. Presumably because we're dealing with people across a bunch of different planes that i guess it would make sense that they would have cards from all kinds of different planes represented because why not you know gideon is from theros or kithion as he was known i believe um you know he was originally from theros so all right like i'm not mad at that it makes sense yeah, so it's interesting. I, I was I was surprised to see that because at very first glance, it's like, oh, this must be from Theros, uh, the OG Theros. But nope. Yeah, and so it also has some flavor text, which is pretty cool. The distinction of bearing the god's banner is nothing compared to the glory of being closer to Nyx. Huh. Actually, you know what? I like that a lot because that speaks to the humility that so many people... Um, that speaks to the humility that leaders, at least what I associate to be the humility that is presented with religious leaders. Um, and I understand every person does it differently um, and every sect is different. I don't want to go into the details. I'm not going to get political on this one. But I understand the idea of being closer to God as being the ultimate goal um, and being outside of this world is really the point and any accolades and any riches that you receive on earth is not the point and it shouldn't be the point and it should never be the point um and you should treat any accolades and riches that you do receive on this planet and you should use them as tools for a greater good and so the idea of being closer to nyx like they captured that really nicely here so the idea of the herald of the pantheon this is a person who or this is a centaur who is the figurehead they carry the banner they're the ones who the army looks to to bolster their morale they're the they are the representation of the gods on the field of battle presumably and here the herald is saying this, this attention, this glory that the gods have granted me is not what I, why I do this. This is not what I am about. What I am here to do is become closer to Nyx. And presumably, I'm going to go ahead and read between the lines a little bit here, by carrying this banner and being amongst this army and being amongst these people, I am going to bring you all with me. Now, mechanically, the card doesn't exactly do that. There's nothing about bolstering forces. There's nothing about enchantment creatures getting buffed or anything like that. But, I mean, the fact that it makes enchantments cheaper, that actually as an idea of being closer to Nyx, because mechanically on Theros, all of the enchantments um, are treated as the stuff of Nyx, the gods themselves, and their meddling in the world is all represented on the enchantments, and that's why you see so much of the Nyx constellation artwork and those that those motifs represented amongst the enchantments. So the idea that this herald can bring the enchantments closer, that you can get, you can attain them, you can attain the lofty heights of Nyx more easily if the herald is in your army. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, that's one, like, ooh, this is like overthinking MTG gold right here. Like, if I can get everyone like this, mm, ah, I'm happy. And it, so if you haven't been enjoying this, maybe this isn't the show for you. Um, until I do some deck techs, in which case, no, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. But I just... I absolutely adore this. I think this is a beautiful synergy of the mechanics and 
the flavor in a really cool way. I, I like it. I just, I, I just, I don't know what else to say. I really just like it. It seems really freaking clean. Also, I love the fact that it's a centaur and a shaman because those are two tribes that have a little bit of support. Just a little bit. Like the littlest bit. Super tiny bit. Um, and when I say the littlest bit, I mean, I can think of like one card with shaman synergy. Like one. There's a um, there's a snake from Kamigawa that gives all shamans the ability. It's, it's a legendary creature. It's a legendary snake. Um, it's the daughter of Sashuro. I forget her name, but um, Sashuro? I think so. I could be mistaken. I, I could be mistaken on that. But it's the, the female legendary snake. There was a, there was a brother and sister Orochi legends um, who were like the son and the daughter of a, a big deal. Um, you know, warrior snake person. Anyway, he gave your he gave like warriors some kind of bonus and then or barbarians really it was some really really weird obscure um creature type and she gave um all shamans the uh the ability to tap for two green and so if you had her down and she was a four drop so if you could ramp into her um and then get a whole deck full of shamans all of a sudden your mana p p production just skyrockets and that's pretty cool well herald of the pantheon could go in that deck so if you had like a uh the, the first thing that comes to mind is like a selesnia deck with um marari's wake and that other you know so all of a sudden because marari's wake doubles your mana production and it's an enchantment so you can cheat cheat it down with herald of the pantheon faster so that's kind of my my thought there so if you're running like a commander deck and you really just want to ramp like crazy cost reduction like this plus that shaman synergy could could be fun i'm not saying it's good but I personally believe that Commander shouldn't be about doing stuff that's good. It should be about doing stuff that's fun. Um, that's personally what I believe in. But you ultimately, have the play the game that you enjoy. That's really what it's got to be. And for me, I enjoy doing fun, janky nonsense. And that sounds like some delightful, fun, janky nonsense. Yeah, and I have no doubt that there are perfectly good, like legit competitive builds that could leverage Herald of the Pantheon. Because it is, it is only, it only costs two. I mean, it, it reduces cost and it costs two i mean that's just really clean it's very efficient it does what it does and it does it well so i wouldn't be surprised if there's a modern deck out there that could run this um i don't know that how competitive it would be because also removing two twos is pretty easy in that format so i don't know but all in all interesting card fun stuff lots to talk about more to unpack than than I first thought upon glancing at it. So anyway, this has been super fun, guys. As always, this has been just unscripted off the dome. Um, thanks so much for hanging out. I appreciate you. I am on Twitter at Hawks42. You can also find me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash hamhawks42. I'm over there streaming almost every day. And uh, yeah, I will catch you guys next time.